Hey folks, welcome back to Eigen Designs. I'm your host, Mark, and today in my shop, I'm going to be working on a custom magnetic knife holder for one of my clients who is a culinary expert. He's looking for a knife solution that doesn't involve one of those archaic magnetic knife bars and wants something a little bit more sophisticated for his home kitchen. So in today's video, I'm going to be working on building a couple of different versions of this using some pecan, and I may even take one of those extras and use it as a chisel holder for my workshop. Let's get going. The client I'll be building this for has lighter colored wood accents in their kitchen, so I'm gonna be opting for a lighter color wood, and in today's build, we're gonna be using pecan. Now, most people, when you say pecan, they think of pies around Thanksgiving time, but it's actually a really viable, sturdy hardwood that's grown domestically here in the United States, there's a large concentration specifically here in Texas. And if you look at the relative hardness scale, pecan has a higher hardness than North American maple, cherry, and even walnut. So it's a great wood species for a build like this. To begin this project, I'll rough cut the pecan into 20 inch segments and then surface on three sides, leaving that live edge intact. Once they're surfaced on three sides, I use my crosscut sled to cut them to final length, which is 18 inches, and then I remove all the loose bark on the live edge of each of the boards. Now comes the tricky part of the build, which is deciding how deep to inlay the neodymium magnets on the back side of the knife holder. And it's a balance because the deeper you bury it, the stronger the magnetic pull will be for the knives. But if you go too deep, you're going to poke through the surface on the other side. And I thought a clever way to test this would be to use my aluminum table saw setup blocks to see what the magnetic force is through a non-magnetic material like aluminum. So I started off with a quarter of an inch, and even through a thickness that thin, it actually has very reduced magnetic pulling force. So then I quickly transitioned to 3 sixteenths and still noticed that there was a reduced pulling force even at 3 sixteenths. So I landed on 1 eighth of an inch below the surface. So that should give me enough room on the underside to actually sand the surface without the risk of sanding through to the magnets whenever we go to finish this project. So to cut these holes, I'll be using my CNC, since that's a reliable way to get to the same depth every single hole. You could also use a Forstner bit with a drill press, but just take note of the spur on the bottom of the Forstner bit, since that may want to poke through the surface on the other side. Now to help with the layout of where the magnets are going to go, I draw a line on the underside of the board to exclude where there's a live edge on the underside of that board. So that's basically going to have me laying out the magnets on the lower five inches of that board. And I initially thought that I was gonna go with the staggered pattern, but I changed my mind, and I'll talk more about that in just a second. So I took the final dimensions of each of the boards, including a thickness measurement taken with a digital caliper, and I sent that information over to the design department here at Eigen Designs. Now the team worked feverishly for over a week to decide where the optimal placement of those magnets were going to be. And after consulting with our internal engineering department, we decided to stack the magnets as opposed to stagger them for two key reasons. One, by stacking them, you now have two magnets acting on every single knife, so you're doubling the pulling force. But two, 
there was a concern from the team that if you stagger the magnets, you might have each knife be inclined to orient itself diagonally across two different staggered magnets, which is not the aesthetic look that we're going for for the client. The team also added two pilot holes to help with the keyhole slots that are going to be routed in a future step. With the design finalized, it was time to let the CNC do its thing. To hold each of the magnets in place, I'm going to be using some tabletop epoxy. Now you can choose to put some pigment or some dye in the epoxy to color it. It's going to be on the back side of the knife holder so nobody would ever see it, but that's really up to your personal preference. One tip I do have is if you're mixing up epoxy and trying to maintain a certain ratio, use a digital food scale like this rather than relying on the markings on the side of your cup because you can get a much more accurate recipe and some types of epoxy are very sensitive to variations of their design recipe. The one that I'm using here is a dedicated epoxy scale and is 100% not the kitchen scale that I just stole without my wife's knowledge. Now before we can pour the epoxy, we first have to install the magnets and I'm taking care to install each magnet in the right direction so they all have the same polarity whenever they're installed. I'm doing this on top of my cast iron table saw so that the magnets are pulled to the very bottom of the hole as the epoxy cures. Now in hindsight, I should have put some butcher paper below this to catch any stray epoxy. Miraculously, none of it got on my table saw, but something like this, you really shouldn't chance it because epoxy is pretty tough to deal with. Once the epoxy cured, I did a light pass through my planer, and because I underfilled each of the holes, you're left with a really nice glossy finish on each of the epoxy holes in your magnetic knife holder. There's just a few more final touches before this project's going to be ready to finish. We'll start off by routing a channel using a keyhole bit uh, that'll allow this project to be hung up on a wall using screw or nails. Then we'll do some trim routing and some sanding and then it'll be ready for finish. To finish this project, I'll be using some Rubio Monocoat Pure, which is a nice hard oil wax that'll be a perfect application for this project. So after applying finish, here's how all four knife holders turned out. And as you'll notice, I snuck in one black walnut just for good measure, but here's how it looks in action. The knife holders look fantastic, the magnetic pull is strong enough to hold even a large kitchen knife, and it's wide enough to hold an entire set of knives. I even did a dry test with my chisels, and the temptation to keep one of these things to make my shop look fancy schmancy is actually pretty high. So that's going to be it for this video. It's pretty straightforward, I encourage you to give it a shot, especially if you've got someone in your life that's a culinary expert 
or perhaps someone who just takes a lot of pride in keeping their kitchen clean, neat, and organized. This is a really elegant storage solution. And if you've made it all the way to the end of the video, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll see you on the next one.